Hello, everybody. <laughs> Crab apples. Okay, so I have never done anything with my crab apples. I'm coming to you live from my, not live, but I'm coming to you from my backyard with my crab apple tree, which is full of crab apples this year. And I've always heard they're edible. And I looked it up online and they are. And you actually can use most of your uh, recipes. I think I'm gonna make crab apple pie filling because then I can make pies and I can use it on, you know, French toast or, you know, whatever I want to use it on if they're good. So the first thing is to figure out if they are ripe, which is said online that they should have a little give to them when I'm feeling them. You don't really have much give yet. And then the next trick is you're supposed to cut them in half to see if they are, the seeds are brown inside. So I'm going to pick one. I don't know. They don't feel very ripe. Cut it in half. Okay. I should probably be doing this on a cutting board since I don't have great control of my hands. Don't recommend this at home. It's pretty tart, but it's probably pretty good though, actually, with sugar. Oh, is that a seed? I don't know. That's what it looks like. I think I better go inside and I'll cut a few in half inside uh, so it's a little safer for me. But I don't think they're ripe anyway. I'll see you inside. Okay, so I'll cut this big one in half but the stems don't even want to come off. Oh, I think it is ripe. Seeds are brown. Okay, now that's really obvious seeds there. I guess we're doing it. This is going to take forever. Okay, enough nice pictures in the sun, I'm going in the shade. Okay, I got my bowl full of crab apples and I actually remembered to leave myself some room on top. Normally I would fill it totally full, but sometimes I forget that I'm not quite so steady uh, walking back in, especially after all this work. So left myself a little room to spill. And then um, I've been really excited because like pulling this motion here, I recognize from my physical therapy exercises I do every day. And so that really gives me a lot better um, ability to keep doing stuff like this if I want to. So keep up with your physical therapy. And then there are a lot of crab apples. So I got this big bowl all from the low hanging fruit. On <coughs> oh, that's where that saying comes from. Get the low hanging fruit first. Can't believe I never put that together. Okay. So like just in a small area, all that I could just bear, I mean, I can still reach a whole bunch more uh, without having to try to get a ladder filled up this whole bowl. So I think I'm gonna see where I'm at. We don't need a lot of uh, pie filling for two people, even if I give it away. No. We will see you inside. Another reason to leave myself some space in my bowl is to put in some salt and vinegar. And then just top it off with water so that I can disinfect and also I did see some worms in them. I, I try not to use those apples but a little bit of worms in there so that'll help take care of them and make sure they're disinfected. I'll soak these for about 30 minutes. Time for a nice break. So I've discovered that the stem does not want to come off. Like it's not something I'm going to be able to just come and pull off of each one. So yeah, I think I'm going to have to cut off the stem on every single one of these suckers. I don't know if this is going to be a little ambitious or not. I'm not going to make you watch this, but it's for sure. <laughs> okay, so one thing about Parkinson's is you have to adapt. Standing here and doing all these... Standing here 
and taking all the stems off of each one of these apples. Uh, I'm not gonna be able to stand here the whole time, so then I moved in this stool and I tried sitting at the sink and doing it, and it just started really putting a big strain on my back and between my shoulders. So I was really gonna end up shredding myself um, and making this project not be very much fun. So now I gotta figure out something else. Let me see what I can come up with. So I decided to do what we used to do when I was a kid growing up doing green beans and set myself up here on the couch, nice and comfy. And we're gonna watch movies. <laughs> yeah, this project just got fun again. Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, I have some, I have some bad news. When I did my research on doing this, first mistake I made <laughs> is that it's gonna take about six cups to make a recipe. Well, that for some reason didn't really notice that that meant that six cups would be one pie. And I'm kind of guessing that one bowl is gonna be one pie. So maybe two pies out of all these that I picked. So that was a little disappointing. Then I was thinking that I didn't need to core these because I read the instructions and it said, it didn't say anything in the instructions about coring them. But what you need to do when you're reading a recipe is when it says six cups of crab apples or you know whatever your measurement is of things, sometimes the instructions for how to prepare things are in there. It's a very basic recipe thing. I can't believe I missed it. But yes, each one of these needs to be cored. The seeds, let me cut one in half here, are actually not that much smaller. These are about the same size as a regular sized apple. And my Craig and I were talking about it last night. We're like, we don't want all those seeds in our stuff. And so then that's when I went back and looked at the recipe and realized that, yeah, I was supposed to core these things. Now, before co or COVID, before Parkinson's, that still wouldn't have been a big deal. Now I've got this big cleaver, and so that's gonna be one of my first big solutions is realizing that that's gonna be a lot sharper than some of my more dull that need to be sharpened kitchen knives. So that actually sliced pretty good. So I'm already feeling a little bit more encouraged about this project, but I was a little worried about, am I gonna be able to finish this and keep up with it? Now, of course, I'm gonna ask Craig, are you there, honey? Oh, he's conveniently outside. Ask Craig if he's gonna help me with it. I'm gonna try to get him to help me off camera. Feeling a little discouraged, but I'm gonna figure out my process here and maybe it won't be that bad. Uh, but I'll show you how I do it after I kind of get going here and, and yeah. All right, so this is working, but it's way too tedious. Uh -huh. Do you want me to do it? Well, you can either do it. Camera is on, by the way. Oh. I don't think we can see it. Do you want me to do it? <laughs> yes, you can. If you want to do it, you can. But that's how it goes, and it's like some of them. Sometimes the seeds are knocked out there, mm -hmm. um, and so then I just threw it in the bowl. But it just seemed like it's going to take take forever. But I thought about lining them all up. Oh. I, I wish I had this on camera, but I thought about lining them all up like the length of the blade and then doing one cut, like cut them in half. And basically they all went like scattered all over and rolled all over the kitchen. Yeah. So that wasn't a good idea. But I just set up the food processor mm. and I'm going to set up the spicer blade. I didn't know if it'd be easier just to pick out seeds. I don't know. So why don't you try that and then I'm going to set up the food processor. Okay, do you have anything to keep these from brown? Turning up? brown. Yeah. But the recipe does call for lemon juice. Right. And that would stop them from browning. So we could put like some lemon juice and water and just have them floating in there and we can drain it then when it's time to actually cook it. Okay. So why don't you get started with that and I'll get lemon juice and water in here. Okay.
single day makes crab apple pie. Right? Now, we could have made, and I suppose we could change our mind, like apple, crab apple butter, crab apple crab jam. Crab apple jam, that's what I would make. And some of the recipes did say just to freeze that too and not just can it. But food processor, just gonna make a big mash? Yeah. Okay. So I did a few handfuls in the food processor. And Craig's gonna cut the rest in half. And then we'll cook it down and we'll make, are we making jam or jelly? Uh, either one. I don't know. Whichever one turns out to be the easiest. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna bring these back over and then I'll look at some more recipes and maybe I'll set up another station and I'll cut some in half too and get this knocked out. So we decided to make apple butter because we think that's going to be the easiest thing to make. Craig's seeing where we're at right now with how many cups we have. Where are we at? Six? That's, that's six? Four. Four? Four cups. Okay. And, it, and it's an instant pot recipe. So it'll help at least speed up the time. So this looks about eight cups. Okay. Then maybe you can yeah. It's like this. Okay. Way. I'll go back to chopping. I don't know if you're gonna need to. What am I gonna do with the rest of these? Oh well. Why don't we make a double batch? Double batch. I was thinking we'd make make a batch to see how we like it, and then see if we're making more. This is about twelve cups. Exact amount. This. So here this, what we've got done already is one recipe. I don't want to throw away all the chickens. Well, that looks like it's going to be pretty full already. Yeah, so, right. so we'll start with this. Stop, start with this and see where we're at. Okay, I got to get back in my phone and see what the recipe says now. Okay, so we've got one cup of water. I'll put it in the Instant Pot. Mmm, that smells good. I'll let you look. Didn't bring a spoon over here. Ah, it smells really good. Here, mm. give it a stir. Mm, it's thick. Delicious looking. Tart. Tart, and that's with no sugar. So now I think we might as well just let it cool down a little bit and we'll finish watching our show about where are we watching our show about now Villa de Leyva in Colombia yeah don't know for sure if this is where we're going but what's promising okay okay now we've made it to the next step which is to mash up the crab apples make the puree crab apple butter so they've been cooked in the Instant Pot. Whoop. So I've got my, I can't think of what this is called. Mill, food mill. Food mill. I've got the stand here. This uh, sieve, 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 sieve. Tomato, tomato, sieve, sieve. Yeah. Sitting on the stand and then we've got the doodad, the masher doodad. I grew up using these, but I, I guess I never thought about what it's actually called. You gonna do the honors? Yeah, I kind of feel a little more It's got a little bit. What was the name of that town? Villa de Leyva. Yeah, it looks really relaxing. Yeah, what I liked about it is lots of chocolate. Mmm, yeah. Look at all that stuff coming out. I know. All right, now I'm going to add in the sugar and the spices. It's really got a nice thick. Look at that beautiful color. Wow. Rosy. So let's see, I've got, I'm going to attach the recipe that I'm supposed to be using. I don't quite have the ingredients on hand because this wasn't, wasn't what I was planning on making. 
but I think it's going to be good. Um, so I have one cup of packed brown sugar, two cups of white sugar, and then I have ground cinnamon, ground nutmeg, ground cloves, and five spice for spices. Oh, I'm supposed to put some salt in. And then the recipe says that's optional, but I think we're going to like it. I'm putting in a quarter teaspoon of salt. Seems like a lot of sugar. Yeah. But it, like Craig said, it's very tart. Get that all mixed in. Uh, freeze it a little bit. I guess I could get the mixer out and use that, make that part a little easier too. Yeah. I'm always so used to doing things the way I used to do them. Oh wow, now this has got an even more rich, deep, like sort of brown, rose, orange color with the spices added in there and the brown sugar. I'm actually kind of glad that we aren't using all brown sugar, even though I like that flavor a lot, because it's, it would really make this color go very dark brown, so that nice rose color. All right, Craig, you want to come taste it? Sure. Ooh, looks very interesting. Mmm. Mmm. Tart got really, really good. Mmm. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah, I like. Mm-hmm. I like better than your regular apple butter. Yeah. Because of that tartness. That special, special tartness. Mmm. Yes. Very good. Gotta figure out how to store it. Mm. <laughs> so it's done now? You just got yep. Do you have to, can you put it in a jar and just put a lid on it? Well, I'm thinking I can, like, we can definitely put one jar just in the fridge. So I read that you can do, it's got so much sugar in it that it'll last about at least three weeks in the fridge without freezing it. And then you can freeze it and have it be really good still for three months. And then actually up to a year. Mm. So the quality of the flavor could go downhill after three months, but it's still really good. So we can do it probably in jars or plastic bags, either one. Oh. I'll think about that. Okay, so I looked at the recipe that I am attaching to this, and yes, you can. Um, you can can them or freeze them. The author of the recipe is not uh, practiced at canning it yet. And I certainly am not very practiced at canning. You can freeze it. Um, usually, I know that canning jars are, used, are safe to freeze with, but the one thing you have to keep in mind when you're freezing in glass is make sure you only you don't fill it all the way to the top because as things freeze, they expand and you don't want your freezer full of broken, exploded glass. But that's the method that we're gonna choose for our project. apple butter that uh, I was gonna make pies with but man this is gonna be great. Now to start all over and make the second batch. Hope I can get Craig talked into helping me with this one too.